we're doing a food tour around Delhi, and I get to hop in front. <laughs> So meet Anuhav. Anuhav. Amurhav. I'm, I'm gonna Anuhav. okay. I'm gonna work on this, yeah, yeah. and I'm gonna be great at saying his name by the end of the day. So this food tour is organized by uh, Food Walks, and we're gonna start by uh, the food market. Very excited. Uh, Tracy, are you hungry? I am. A little bit. Starting to. It's a little early. Give me a little time, but yes. Fair <laughs> enough. So all their information are gonna be down in the description. So make sure to check them out for your next trip in Ooh. Delhi. Shiv Mistan. Uh, Mistan means Shiv Mistan. Yeah. Mistan. Shiv Mistan. Say it again. Shiv Mistan. Okay. Shiv. Mistan. I'll use your clip. Okay. <laughs> okay, so our first stop of the day, we did learn that most people in Delhi they actually don't make breakfast at home. They go out for breakfast on Sundays, so. though. Today is Sunday, so we are experiencing our first breakfast stop of the day. <laughs> mm. This one is definitely my favorite. There's a little bit of cottage cheese in the pastry. It's delicious. It's really, really the only thing is like for me coming from Canada, like these are not breakfast flavors, but I could eat that all day every day. Okay, for breakfast dessert, we have jelly bee, and this is probably the most popular sweet in India. And we hear it's it's a personal favorite. So <laughs> that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Very sweet. A little warm. Yeah. Mm. So next stop is actually chai. And what they use here, they actually use milk as the base and then they're gonna boil it. They have your normal tea leaves. And then you have ginger, cloves, and cardamom as well, all smashed up and put in. And it's not like ground, so you actually get the true flavor of the fresh herbs and everything. We're in a very small alleyway, and I feel like wherever I am, I'm like in the way of someone going. Indian chai? You I have it with sugar. with sugar. And I have it without. We had to try both. Mm. Mm. That's very mm. nice. If you see at the bottom, there's an optical illusion like the path kind of follows you no matter where you are in the room. And this is the man who painted it. Very nice. So this was Indian chai and to be honest, I don't personally like tea, but that was actually lovely. So I'm a fan of Indian chai. So next we're just entering the spice market. And this honestly was one of the bucket list places on my list that we had to hit when we were in India. Walking through the spice market, we came across Lena. Thank you so much, Lena. <laughs> no problem. And she is actually the only female on the spice market that runs her little shop here. So she was telling us that basically she lives behind her shop, which is something that is not common here because people that normally have shops, they have employees and they live somewhere uh, outside of this area. But she decided to run her own shop. She does it to support her family. And it's a very nice success story. She's been featured in a bunch of different magazines and things like that because she's the only female doing so. And our shop is very popular because it's, it's booming in there. So our next stop behind me is Chani Ram. It started in 1901 and actually in Pakistan and it's considered to be one of the best sweet shop in Delhi. So this one is a special one, a special sweet for Holi. For Holi. Yeah. And this one is, has like dry fruit and nuts inside. To be honest at first I wasn't sure looking at the texture of it, but it's really, really good. This one is just sweet and delicious. <laughs> This is 
called a lassi and it's a yogurt based drink food and this one is saffron uh, flavored and you're supposed to eat the cream up top first oh, that's good. Mm. so I'm gonna talk about like the food part of it because I always get a little bit cautious I'll put it that way because of my stomach but he's saying this one here this location is actually safe to eat because most of them are made with ice but for people coming out of town this one is not it's just put in the refrigerator no ice at it mm. Mm. that was very good our guide is like a, some sort of celebrity around here i've seen him take photos with people a lot of people just stop and talk to him and if you watch a lot of travel vloggers you might recognize this guy from like a Karen Nate video back in the days, but he does a lot of work with vloggers like us, so he's awesome. So now we're going a little bit more further away. So we jumped on a little rickshaw, but this one has pedals. I think they call rickshaw anything with like three wheels. Uh, here. Apologize in this series if I call them tuk-tuks. It's just innate for me to call them tuk-tuks. That's all. I have a question for you. Yeah. So this is a rickshaw. Yeah. But tuk-tuks are also rickshaw. Yes. This is also a rickshaw. This is kind of a manual rickshaw. Then you have the battery run rickshaw. Then you have gas run rickshaw. So anything with three wheels is a rickshaw. Yes. You can three wheels. You can call it a rickshaw. Fair enough. <laughs> just wanted to be clear. <laughs> What is the name of the bit, Tracy? Nan Katai. Katai. Nan Katai. <laughs> so we're in the bread street here having Nan Katai. And apparently it's more of like a, a shortbread. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's like exactly like shortbread. That is so good. So this behind me is the oldest bread shop in Delhi. It started in 1872 and we're getting a sweet one and a spicy one. And when an Indian guy tells you it's spicy, it's gonna be quite something. And it's been around for six generations. Yeah, crazy. I haven't tried it yet, we're gonna just about to. <laughs> so that's the chili one. I feel like Let's, you need to try it yeah, first. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good, not spicy yet. A little bit <laughs> manageable, you should be fine. Okay. <laughs> In it, there's a bunch of different things which are green chilies yeah. and then spices. Okay, that's really good. It's really good bread. It's full of flavor. And again, from the oldest shop, bread shop in that, Delhi. Yeah, that is very good. It's spicy, but like for being green chili, it's not as spicy as I anticipated it being. So like, that's good. It means I can eat it. <laughs> so the second one is condensed milk. We, we call it rabri. It's just condensed, condensed milk. milk with dry fruits, cashews, almonds, raisins, and sugar. So this one is more like a dessert. It's a sweet one. Yeah. You're gonna like that. It's such different flavor to like what we're used to back in Canada. Like, and that's what I really like. Everything, everything has so much flavor and tastes so much more than our bland Canadian food. Sure. The name of this dish is Dolat Ki Chaat. And if you translate it into English, it means snack of wealth. So this is basically milk and cream. You churn it together, then this white foam is formed. You collect it, over it you add some saffron, pistachios, powdered sugar, and then you eat it. Okay, so this is a snack that you can actually only get in Old Delhi. And you can pretty much only get it in the winter months because it has to be kept cold or else it kind of melts. So right now it's currently on a massive block of ice. So light and fluffy. Wow, that is so much more light than what I thought it was going to be. A little worried because like we couldn't finish the plate at the last thing because we we're so full. So I was like, oh no, here we go. Ready? Mm. Yeah, it's like meringue but like much more fluffy. 
yeah. So our guide was telling us like a cart like this, this guy makes thousands of these little shortbread looking thing every single day and they can make up to like 15,000 rupees a day which is quite a bit when you think about it. Telling you like this guy is a big celebrity, everyone is stopping him left and right. I love it. So we left the Hindu side and now we are now in the Muslim side and here it is much more chaotic, much more traffic, many more people and we're just beside the largest mosque in Delhi which is beautiful. So welcome to Karim, this is our next restaurant and this place seems pretty famous because they've been like featured on the time, I saw like a, the BBC food guide outside and stuff so high expectations. As you see, like this restaurant was established in 1913. Like again, more than 100 years old restaurant. I could eat that all night. So what do we have here? We have the kebab and mutton korma. Matan kurma. And that's a roti. Yeah. So this is the Muslim way to do it, you see. Yeah. This okay. is khamiri roti. The word khamir means east. Okay. So they add east in the refined flour, white flour, then they bake it in sandu. And this goes very well with this uh, curry. So you can pack okay. it this. So the recipes of the two things that we've tried in this restaurant were actually passed on generation to generation. And fun fact, back in the days, those two things were the only food item on the menu. Now there's many more. Also, this place is massive. Karim, Karim, and Karim here too. So Karim, probably the best kebabs I ever had in my life by far. But I have to say, a little spicy. <laughs> So welcome to Aslam Chicken. This place apparently runs 12 hours a day. It's packed this entire 12 hours. It's opening right now in 20 minutes and there's already a bunch of people inside waiting. The guy that is at the counter, it's actually his personal re recipe. And this is the best butter chicken in all of India apparently. Butter chicken here is made with amul butter, which is apparently the best butter in the country. Okay, so this place is massive. There's two floors with plenty of tables, but this place is not even open yet, and it's already full. Like I think we've got like the last table. <laughs> High expectations. But this kind of butter chicken tikka you won't get anywhere else. Like many people tried to copy him, but no one could match that quality. So this is like super different than any butter chicken I had before. I would say this is superior. It's just so buttery, like insanely buttery. Yes. But the taste is like fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> So this place is definitely a must try, but make sure to come here before they open at 1 p.m. because you're not gonna get a table. Last stop for dessert, we have some rice pudding. I didn't even like rice pudding, and this is so good. So I think I have to say this is my favorite sweet dessert yeah. we've had today. That was a very fast stop. We came in, sat down, ate that thing in about 29 seconds, and now we're leaving. Just walking around Delhi is its own experience. It's very hectic, but at the same time full of life. I personally love it, but you gotta be ready before coming. I truly think that people are honking. They don't even know why. Just, they're just doing it because it's a thing to do. Our guide is trying to negotiate for a rickshaw, but as soon as like the driver sees us, he's bumping up the price. So he's like, let me go negotiate, then come. Once again, too much traffic, we're just walking. The more you 
you walk, the more things you see. That was just a beautiful religious procession. Beautiful smells. They're burning some sort of incense or something. Flowers everywhere. It's nice. So the last place is not the last one. We decided to opt for one more. Um, this is Kofi. And basically, this is the oldest one here in Delhi. So we have two flavors. This is like the traditional flavor, which is saffron and pistachio. And it's milk-based. Whereas this one is non-milk-based, more like fruit juice-based. And this one is pomegranate. So this is basically Indian ice cream. Yeah. Cheers. Everything we have today is delicious. It tastes like a popsicle. So this is the end of our food tour, but it was amazing. I had such a good time. It's always the best option when you go to a new country in a new city. It's always to find a local, somebody with experience like this guy right there, <laughs> to take you around because you'll make sure to never miss a good spot. So thank you so much. Thank you. All the information of uh, the, the company are going to be down in the description uh, below. Highly, highly, highly suggested because otherwise you're going you're gonna to miss all the good food. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for Thank coming. you so much. It was our pleasure. <laughs> Okay, so we're done with eating for a bit, um, but we're still gonna go check out uh, the mosque that we saw earlier in the mm. Muslim uh, part of town. It looks fantastic. Heard yeah. a lot of good stuff about it. So let's go for a visit. We got a lot of stuff left to do. So welcome to Jama Majid, the largest mosque in Delhi, and this building is just beautiful. Now let's go in. I'm wearing shorts. You're not allowed. So um, apparently they have things that you can put around, like a. A men's dress. Yes. I'm okay with that. First thing first, let's appreciate the Tracy's beautiful dress. Yeah. Looks great. Go, goes well with your eyes, even though you wear sunglasses. <laughs> and then my new uh, dress as well. It's very nice. Tracy's never been this popular. Every time we stop, people come and they want to take photo, not with me, just with her. I mean, she's pretty. It's the dress, it's the new dress. Sure. This place is very nice, very like communal. You can tell there's a ton of locals. Some are just on the ground having a little lunch. A lot of people just gathering around the fountain, talking to each other. It looks like, a, yes, it is a religious site, but also very, very social place. So in this tower there, you can actually go all the way up and the view from of Delhi must be fantastic. But sadly, only Muslims are allowed up and I'm all about respecting culture, so we're not going up. So beautiful mosque, worth a visit, make sure to be covered and everything, but if you're in the area without proper clothing, they have everything, they'll, they'll give it to you for free, and they charge 300 rupees to go in. That's pretty much it. Um, if you're a foreigner, you're probably going to be very popular in there, but that's it. So welcome to the Red Fort. This is one of the most popular um, attraction in Delhi. This was actually once back in a very long, long time in the 1600, the house of one of the emperor of India. And fun fact, the architect that designed this fort is the same one designed the Taj Mahal. Red Fort and as you enter there's kind of like a market there there are a lot of people here um, and every so often we catch people trying to take photos of us it's definitely because we're big YouTube stars anyway let's see what we can find So as you're walking around the Red Fort, there's a bunch of people. They're basically guides, but they're accredited and everything. And one almost got us. We almost hired that guy. <laughs> so basically, as we're going, he just made me laugh, which is why he almost got a job. Um, he was like, because if not, you're just going to be walking around and like not knowing what you're walking by. And I'm like, you're <laughs> not fair. wrong. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so this place, just like the mosque, like a lot of people are just here to hang out, friends and family, spending some time nice together. together. It's just good. Instead of like, you know, playing video games in a basement, you know who you are. <laughs> Go play outside. After this video, of course.
So Red Fort, very beautiful, would recommend. And if you like history and everything, I highly suggest that you pay a few dollars to get a guide so you can learn much more than what we just did. <laughs> now back to the madness, we gotta go find a tuk-tuk. And there's a theme park there. Pretty cool. If you haven't been to Delhi, you haven't been to India, Driving here is uh, is a different experience. Right now we're completely surrounded, but he's gonna go through somehow. We're doing it. Oh yeah, we're doing it. I just want to know, like, people were following us. Like, what do they want? Like the guy in black right there. This guy. He's been following us like all around for like probably half a kilometer. If we go right around the tree, he goes right. If we stop, he stops. Just like, I'm. I want to know what their goal is. Like, I don't feel in danger or anything no, like that. No, no, no. I just want to know. What is the end goal? <laughs> Stopped on the side, let him pass, now we're following him. <laughs> so the thing is, is like, we've made eye contact multiple times when he tries to look. And we're just blatant obvious about it because I'd rather him know that we know he's there. And when we thought we lost him across the street, I was like, oh, okay, there we go. Turn around, there was again. And he tried to continue straight and pass us and think that we lost him. No. Again, what is the purpose? Why? So we are back in the calmness, serenity mm. of our room. After like a day walking and tuk-tuking around, yes, tuk-tuking is now a verb that I made up um, around Delhi. Like it's very hectic. It's very yeah. like sensory overload. Yeah. So this feels great right now. It does. Look, look, listen. Nobody's at selfie? No selfie? One, yeah, nobody's honking. Selfie? <laughs> Nobody wants to take selfie with us. So I got a little souvenir from here. Um, basically, I've been wanting one of these scarves just because of when you go into temples and stuff, like you have to cover up, and I Very regret nice. it not having this in Thailand too. Beautiful. So pretty. 500 rupees. So, as for the food tour, fantastic. Yes. It's always like so cool when you go to a new city once again to have a local, mm -hmm. like, it, it's the easier and probably best way to discover certain areas, certain foods. Yeah the culture and everything. And on top of that, I'm gonna say it again, it's, I'm, I always like going with the local too because they kind of know like the safer options too because yeah. he's been in the business for a while. Safer like in terms of food? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, like he knows like what stalls are cleaner and everything like yeah. that. So and also because I like, like we're not from here and our, our stomachs don't have like the, 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 the bacteria oh, and yeah, everything. Yeah. Like for us, like just a tiny bit of the local water and we're done. So if you're ever in Delhi, highly recommend that tour. I'm gonna put once again, mm -hmm. other information down below. I'm gonna put also his YouTube channel because he's, he's a big deal, like he over is. a million like subscribers. Anyway, check it out. He's a famous food vlogger here. Yeah. And yeah, otherwise, see you guys. And the next one. <laughs>